It's happened again. That's right. We're in the Jacksonville metro area up here and we're looking at this condo train and it's happened again that there is no sales above the list price. None. Okay. Okay. When it happened before, I said, all right, let's see what happens. Now it's happened again. It's something we really got to watch because with the regular homes, when overall sales, like when you see the Friday night show, we always have some that sold above list, whether it's new or not. Condos, when I separate the condos only in this show, we look at none were above list this week. Hey, you know what? I cover more than just that. I go back into my MLS account and I grab all kinds of data. I get an Excel spreadsheet. I sort it all out for you and put it all together. What else am I covering tonight? I'm going to be going into the back end of my MLS and I'll be showing you the active listings for condos, the solds in the last seven days, those that are under contract, those that withdrew, expired, the new condo sales, and, and the foreclosures. Okay, Now those foreclosures will be of active listings. Then I'm going to show you how people paid for these condos. What percentage of people used cash? How many used conventional financing? How many used FHA and how many used VA? I put everything into an Excel spreadsheet that is easy to, to track and to look at. We're going to be tracking this weekly of all the MLS data, plus a whole lot more than what I show in the beginning of the video. Condos of the week. These are examples of condos that sold below list and a condo that sold above list. And we go over what they paid for, what the appreciation was, and also look at those monthly condo fees. So as you can see, there's a lot to go over. I get a lot more data than what we're going to see. Hey, you know what? I'm just a regular guy that happens to be a real estate agent up here, so I take you into the back end of my MLS every week. So right now, let's get started and look. We're in, this is week six of the condo edition of Bubble Watch, and let's look at those active listings first. Okay, here we are in the back end of the Northeast Florida MLS, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how many condos are active. That number right there is not the condos, so let's take a look, see what the condos do. Right there, 991 condos are active, okay? Now let's take a look and see how many sold in the last seven days. That number is 44. Next, I'm going to take a look and see how many are active under contract right now. How many are currently active under contract? Now, these are with contingencies, okay? Like contingencies that could be for financing, appraisals, repairs, things like that. That number is 119. Next, I take a look at how many of those that are under contract with contingencies went pending in the last seven days. That number is 23, and when you add up the pending and active under contract, that's when you get the total that are under contract. All right, next let's see how many people withdrew their listings in the last seven days. Now, withdrawals are ones that are still active listings, they just can't be shown. That number is 11, okay? And sometimes those people withdraw it for health reasons or whatever, or repairs or things like that, okay? And then they come back to showing them. Next, let's take a look and see how many listings expired in the last seven days. That number is 14. Okay, now, now this is different than, than the ones that were withdrawn. They expired, they did not sell, and they are off market. Okay, next we take a look and see how many new condos sold in the last seven days. And that number is zero. No new condos sold. All right, next we take a look and see what is the active inventory for new condos. These are the new ones that are available for sale. These are the active listings for new condos. That number is eight. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I take a look at the uh, foreclosures. Now, these are active listings of condos that are in the status of foreclosure, pre-foreclosure, or short sale. So let's start off with the ones that are in the foreclosure status. That number is 44. Next, we're going to see how many are in pre-foreclosure status. That number is 1. And how many are in short sale status? And that number is 1 also. All right, now I take all that data and I export it from the MLS and, and it comes into an Excel spreadsheet, which is a lot of data. A lot more data than what I just showed you right there. So stay with me. We've got a lot to cover. Hey, and then what I do is I convert it into an Excel spreadsheet of my own that's easier to read something like this where we can track the numbers week by week. So let's go back into my Excel spreadsheet and plug those numbers in and compare them with the previous weeks. 
Okay, here we are, week six of the condo edition, and we're looking up at the top. Now, it, for those that are new to this show, and when it's in the yellow, that is the current week, and the previous weeks you see be behind us right here. Okay, top one, active listings, 991. We see that number has increased from the previous weeks, so this is this is a real good indicator right here, because we've only been six weeks in, so you can see the progression. The amount sold, okay, 44 sold. Now, week one, we had 43, then it really dropped off, and now it went back up, okay? Active under contract, okay? That dropped a little bit, okay, from the previous weeks, but still that week one was really our low. Okay, pendings, 23, dropped a little bit from last week, but it's above some of the other weeks. Total under contract brings us to 142, so that number is a little bit less than last week. All right. The number of people that withdrew their listings increased to 11, and those that expired, 14. Now, expired listings last week was high, but it was also high for everything. It wasn't just condos. Um, new condos sold, still zero. Look at that. Since I started this, not one new condo has sold, and the new condos active, we actually increased one to eight. All right, how do people pay for these? All right, here we take a look and we see. Um, now, what I do, because there's so few of the condos that it's not as, as numerous as like the regular home sales and when everything's combined, um, then I also show here on the side how many of those. So we had a total of 44, so we can see cash, 26 of them, which was 59%, conventional, 12 of them, which is 27%, FHA, VA, and other all came in at 2, which was about 4.5%. So we see the bulk, a big bulk of it. You see more cash sales in condos than you do in regular housing. Even though the regular housing is now about one-third, well, this is twice that. All right, let's take a look at the foreclosure. All right, here we are. Foreclosures have gone up a little bit, as with everything else and foreclosures. Um, not a lot, but still it is a tick in the up direction. All right, let's take a look at those that the sold um, below list, at list, and of course, as we all know, above list, none. Here we are. Condos that sold under list, 90%. Wow. All right, that's 40 of them. Condos that sold at list, four of them, and none above list. All right, let's take a look at, next I take a look at the ranges, okay, that um, these were sold in. Um, you know, and first I start off with everything that's 500,000 and above. So here we are, 500,000 above, and again I put the number to the side how many of those were out of this 44. So as you can see, a little over 20% above. Condos that sold in the 400 range, 6.8. Condos that sold in the 300 range and the 200 range came in at 20.45 for each one. And condos that sold below 200, 31%. So, and we see the numbers there, 14 of them there. So the highest amount of condos sold were in the below 200,000. Okay, so the prices are dipping, all right? Now we take a look at the new, and again, the new, there's nothing new, all right? It's zero, so nothing to report there. All right, all this, this show came about and everything because of the new law in Florida guiding condos and how they have to account now for estimated repairs that may come up in the future. Now, it gets into a lot, and... You know, I don't repeat everything over every show, so if you're new to this show and haven't seen it, I'm going to have that, uh, I'm going to place up here during the show the box where you can check on the uh, show that I did this. Now, that was week one where I cover what this new Florida law is and what it is, and basically anything that's three stories and above is affected by this so because of that three-story rule and also age okay um, condos that are 30 years old or 25 depending on where they're located okay so i show some more data here i'm going to show you in just a second hang with me on the stories the amount sold at certain um, story levels not the individual unit but the total complex so it could be a two-story condo but it's in a complex that's 11 stories also, I look at the age because the age matters, and I should break it down as to what what year the condos were sold. 
All right, and then I show what story they were too, because that all matters. All this data matters. It's going to make sense here. Let's go to it right now. Okay, as you can see here, we're in week six, and in this column right here is where I have the amount of units sold, and then the total stories is on the side. So, for instance, the first one, first story condos, six of them sold. Two story condos, 22 sold. Three story, seven. Four story condos, eight sold. And then in the 20 story condos, one sold. There's our total of 44 at the bottom there. All right, here we go to the years. All right, we'll see now. Um, you see the number of stories is on the second. So this is one condo that was built in 1971. We start at the lowest year, and it was a two story condo. Another one was um, built in 1974. Now you see how 1974 is twice? That's because these are individual units. Because when I scroll down, everything totals up to it's, it's 44 units, okay? So the second one's. There was two of them that were built in 1974, two stories, and so on. So what I'm going to do, instead of reading it out, I'm going to let you look at it. I'm going to scroll slowly here, and then you can always freeze the video to study it if you'd like, okay? And then those are the previous weeks that were just the, the year of the condos. That I, don't, I don't keep track of the stories for the previous weeks, just the current week. So let me scroll down. Okay, next I'm going to take a look at the counties, okay? Now here is where the condos were sold in what county. So we see 24 were sold in Duval, Duval County, which is Jacksonville, 17 in St. John's, and 3 in Nassau for our total of 44. Okay, the next thing I do is where I look at, I pull right from the Excel spreadsheet itself, um, the data of the numbers of all the ones that sold below list where I sh where I'll show you let's well let's just go into it this here is the original list price the price that it sold for is the close price and the difference okay how much below the list that it sold for so you can see that top one there was over two million dollars and then it was a hundred eighty thousand below but then so on just like look at that second one 279.9 and then sold 93.9 below it all right so here again i'll scroll down and you can take that and freeze the video to, to study it if you'd like All right, the next thing I do is I take uh, what we call condos of the week, where I take a condo that sold below list and one that sold above list, and then I go into the numbers, see, okay, look at the history of it when it went up for sale, look and see what people paid for it, look at an appreciation calculator, we look at all this, but because, again, we have none that sold above you know, list price. We just got one condo of the week, and that's coming up, and the one that sold below list price. Hey, you know, if if you like the way I put this show together with these numbers, make it easy for you to read and give you these stats every week, then give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, then just hit the subscribe button there and hit notifications because I got a lot more than just this. Check out my channel. You see I've got a lot of different videos about everything. And then also I've got a regular you know, bubble watch show that covers everything, including condos and regular regular homes for sale. And let's get now to that um, condo of the week that sold below. All right, here we are. It was built in 2010, so it's so it's not in that age strict restrictions. It's a two story. Total stories is two, as you can see, so it doesn't fall into all that. And let's see, it's in St. John's County. It's a three bedroom, two and a half bath. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the history on this one. Okay, as we see here, they started off with an asking price of $335,000. Okay, um, looks like they had some open houses at that 335 level, didn't get any traction, obviously. Lowered the price to 325, then to 315 and 305. Okay, when they did to 305,000, then they ended up getting an offer for 287,000, which they accepted. 
It was on the market for a total of 129 days. All right, let's go back and look and see what those fees are and how much per square foot it sold for. Okay, right here we see their monthly fees are $343 a month, and I was told that that is an increase that happened in January. It was a little bit less, but in January they increased it, so that is the new fees. Okay, right down here we see that this condo here, $194,000, not $194, $194 a square foot, okay? Some people may think it feels like $194,000, but that's what it is. So we're still almost $200 a square foot, even with that price reduction. All right, let's put that into an appreciation calculator. Well, nope, we got to first see what they paid for. Okay, here we see that they bought this condo and closed on it the end of January of 2022, so a little over two years ago, and they paid $245,000. Now let's put that into an appreciation calculator. All right, when we plug those numbers in, now there was no concessions on this deal, so we're going to go straight with the numbers. Purchase $245, sold $287, held on to it just over two years. Their appreciation was 7.53%, and I doubt they did anything to it in that little short time. Um, so that was actually pretty good. And considering when they bought it, it was probably at the higher end. All right, since they bought this thing in January 22, 22 that was at when prices were up. 2021, they were going up, and 2022, in the beginning, they were pretty high. So they bought it at the high end. Sold it for the 287, which was less than they wanted, but they still did, did did all right on the appreciation. So why do I show you these houses of the week or condos of the week in this case? Is because I want to show you that just don't be afraid of that list price and all that. You know, give a give a you know an offer of what you're comfortable with or what you feel it's worth. I'm not talking about investors, you know, in this case. I'm just talking about people looking for a place to live, okay? On what you can afford because a lot of times your offer is based on, you know, what you're approved for and how much you can afford. Although financing with condos is more difficult than the regular homes, and if you watch my previous videos on this I talk about that and, and to where, you know, there are other restrictions that these lenders have on these condominiums. So one of them being like a certain percentage of people, if it goes over a certain percentage of people total in that condominium complex that are late on their HOA fees or other fees and stuff like that, or, um, or they're like, you know, say like late on their mortgage payments and things, then they'll back off from that and that's why you see such a high amount of cash buyers for condominiums than the financing okay and if you're looking to purchase like we don't know these these um one and two story ones may be some good deals to had okay even with the fees okay if you get the condo cheap enough even some of the bigger ones okay so you just got to watch it and you, you know you got to weigh it all out and if you're looking to buy a condo or anything like that or even a regular house or a townhome or something like that up here in this north florida area you know just get with us at this number here shoot a text you know or give a call and also you can also reach me at this email right here below all right yeah Let's see, Friday is the real bubble watch, and man, I lose track. I think it's week 49. So until then, I'm out of here. <laughs>